You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode episode of Cilio, Tales of a New Dawn. So let's go ahead, jump right back into Diego's route, guys and gals. Please sit back and enjoy me for the next 18 minutes of my entertainment. Let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> The morning began as expected with a call from Ty, asking me to work a closing shift during the evening. He vetoed on calling in Diego, insisting he needed the day off to recover. This pleased Diego, who instantly ripped off his shirt and began lazing on the couch. I was to my surprise when several minutes later, my phone rang once again, and this time with Lucas on the other end. I told Lucas I was already working for Ty during the evening, but could work a few hours in the morning should he need it, something he was uh, amenable to. Having recently arrived, Lucas had put me to work sorting and preparing letters to be sent to the participants of the combat tournament. This included both the victors and those who'd lost. I was responsible for, com for combing through a list of the participants and address and addressing the envelopes, whilst Dom and Eric were preparing the letters to be contained within. I'd made a good start and even labeled Diego's letter, one no doubt congratulating him on his success, when I came across another familiar name in the list. Kyrex? We'd suspected his participation was a possibility, but now we knew for sure. That being said, I didn't yet know the results of the fight. I made a mental note to ask one of the others when I, when I handed over the envelopes. Alas, I ran into another problem soon afterwards. I'd run out of envelopes. Hey, Lucas, where do we keep the envelopes? Oh, over here. Lucas opened the stationary drawer and its contents stopped in mid-sentence. Huh. What's wrong? I, um, I thought we had more. Don't we? Nope. Oh, so what do we do now? Go and buy some. The other two are busy doing what they're doing, but there's not much you can do without more envelopes. Feel like tagging along? It's better than sitting and waiting. True enough. As a stationery store in the local mall, we have a company account with. We get supplies at a good discount. Shall we get a move on then? Yep, let's go. Lucas and I arrived at the, in the mall and made our way to the stationery shop, which was situated opposite the food court. We went inside and purchased two large boxes of envelopes. We each carried one and left the, uh, left the store again together. Jeez, I didn't expect it to be so heavy. What are you talking about? These are practically weightless. Sounds like someone's having trouble. You ain't been keeping up with your fitness routine, Brian. Oh, great. Of all the people I'd come to meet in Woodcrest, it was the one person I at least wanted to run into. I think he can manage, thank you. What do you want, Kyrax? Would you believe it if I said I just wanted to say hi? Not for a minute. Heh, <laughs> guess that's fair enough. Ain't that far from the truth, though. I got no business with you, but Lucas, I got... But Lucas and I go way back. That's an overstatement. I recalled seeing Kyrex's name in the list shortly before. I decided, to get, I decided I'd get my answer straight from the raptor's mouth. I heard you competing in the tournament. How's that going for you? Heh, <laughs> if I didn't know better, I'd think you were showing an interest. I'm through to the quarters, if that's what you want to know. You got me, you got me. Anyway, what are the two of you doing anyway? Getting some side action, Brian? We we're out, we we're out of envelopes, actually. What, are you working for Lucas? There was a sudden change in Lucas's expression following Kyrex's words. Y yeah. Kyrex pondered for a moment while Lucas looked somewhat evasive. Interest in time, and wouldn't you say, Lucas? I'm sorry, I had to make a call. What are you talking about? Having both you and Diego on staff would have been a problem. So you chose the guy... So, you chose the guy... You chose the guy who works one day a month over the guy that worked most every day. It wasn't personal. I made the call I had to make, based on what I knew. What you knew? And what the hell was that? It's like I said, things between you and Diego had gone sour, not to mention there were some harsh allegations floating around. You didn't think to talk to me first? It wasn't just that. You know it wasn't. Your work ethic was a factor, as was your attitude and your unwillingness to take instruction. Those allegations were simply the final straw. All of a sudden, something of a new story had been unraveled before my very eyes. Both Ty and Lucas had of course mentioned that Diego had referred a worker who was subsequently fired shortly before my arrival. In hindsight, given the little I had heard about it, it made sense that the worker was at Kyrex. Alas, I hadn't made that connection myself. And now it seemed as though it was his replacement. I was his replacement. Not that I was particularly bothered by that fact. Rather, I was. I simply didn't want to be dragged into Kyrex's affairs. Looking at Kyrex, he was clearly angry, but it remained silent. I suppose he didn't rightly know what to say, or was processing the events in his head. Lucas took this opportunity to give me a nudge, before tilting his head towards the exit. 
I nodded, and the two of us left Kyrax all in his lonesome on the food court. I chanced to look back in his direction as we were passing through the entrance doors. He hadn't moved, nor had his expression changed. I really shrugged. After all, I had no sympathy for the guy, not after what he did. Upon our return, I unpacked the envelopes and resumed work. Nearly a hundred people who had participated in the heats, a surprisingly good turnout for Woodcrest being such a small place. As I went, I passed Russell's name. I felt a little bad knowing his letter wouldn't be good news, but it was nothing he didn't know already, nor anything he seemed to have much of an issue with. I recalled he was starting his first day of work with Ty today. I wonder if our shifts would cross over. It didn't, it didn't take me much longer to finish up. It was a little after midday, and while I'd expected to be done earlier, I still had some time before I was due at Ty's. All finished! Great work. You can leave the rest to us. You going to take them to the post office? I was thinking between the three of us, we could hand deliver them. It's not a huge amount of letters. We all live in different parts of the town, so we could tackle them on our way to on our ways back home. You know, it would have been a lot easier if you just emailed them. Me? Using a computer? You've lost your mind. Besides, the contract quite clearly required physical letters. What can you do, I guess? Oh, and by the way, I am sorry things got uncomfortable earlier. It's all right. They're bound to be. They're they're bound to any time Kyrex shows up. You think I made the right decision? From what I know about Kyrex, definitely. Although I don't know much about the specific situation. Well, he was on Well, he was fairly unmotivated and didn't take easily. And didn't easily take instruction. If I could get him working, he did fine. But well, it was an if. Also, Dom wasn't too fond of him and Eric. Well, well, Dom wasn't too fond of him and Eric. Well, that's complicated, I guess. I mentioned a while back they didn't like the guy. I guess I didn't need a reason to believe it. It seemed as though initially they hit it off. As time went on, though, I don't know. Something went wrong. Not my business, really. Carrick is kind of two-faced. Probably it had something to do with it. Who can say? Anyway, when things between him and Diego got complicated, it was a tough decision. Carrick's worked off him, but not as hard as I'd have liked. He had more supervision than I wanted to give. Diego, on the other hand, was busy more often than not. But when he did work, he did he did pretty well and got things done. Honestly, it was less about what I'd heard and more about not having them both on staff. What you'd heard? From Diego? Well, no. I didn't need Diego at all. I didn't see Diego at all during that time. I just heard whispers. I'm not the person... I'm not the person who takes sides in all this. At least without having to heard the story from all angles. So I didn't just fire him on a rumor. I guess that's why I wanted you to know. It's good to hear, and for what it's worth, I think you made the right decision. It was awfully good luck you showed up when you did. With the tournament and everything happening, things got busy. I'm glad for your help. You're a reliable worker. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for giving me the shot, too. It was nice to have work so soon after arriving here. Being a small place, I can't say I was expecting it. Woodcrest may be small, but it's surprisingly lively. No doubt thanks to a certain someone in City Hall. Huh? What do you mean? Who do you mean? Uh, uh you, have work, you, have, you have work for Ty later, don't you? Wouldn't this be a good time for lunch? Y yeah? I shouldn't keep you. Thanks for your work today. Uh, no sweat, I guess. Uh, see you later. See ya. See ya. Lucas's rapid change of topic was suspicious, to say the least. It struck me he was likely referring to Spencer, given his appearance the day prior. It was obvious he had some ties to the local government, but the exact nature of those ties remained elusive. My curiosity was as ever killing me, but there was little I could do to state it. Do to state it. In lieu of further consideration of the topic, I made my way out of the building into the street outside. Checking the time on my phone, I had little while I had a little while left before I was due at ties. I just needed to figure out how I was going to spend that time. Alright. Main question is to do to do. Okay. The time had come for me to start work. I made my way inside and was surprised to see Russell already manning the front desk and taking customers' orders. I put things in the cupboard behind the counter and decided to head back into the kitchen to make my presence known to Ty before starting work. Ah, oh, Brian, right on time as always, I see. I wouldn't dream of being late. Well, I am most pleased to see you as always. How was your day? How has your day been thus far? Pretty good. Uh, a few hours of work with Lucas in the morning. Did have an uncomfortable run-in with Kyrex, though. Oh, you did? Yeah, the whole thing was weird. Kyrex uh, was... Kyrex was his usual self, full of bluster, but something Lucas said shut him down. I didn't quite follow it. Oh, and I happened to happened to find out he's won the tournament, too. Won his first match. I <coughs> suppose that was to be expected. I see. Brian, may I ask a favor of you? Sure. What is it? Would you mind terribly if we kept that between ourselves for the time being? Sounds to me like you already knew. 
Well, I might have heard something, yes. Dude. But that is neither here nor there. What is more important, what is more important is that Diego does not find out. Have you lost your mind? That's clearly something he would want to know. And something he would no doubt agonize over at the very least, if not withdraw from the tournament entirely. Please understand, I am of no... I am of no mind to keep secrets needlessly, but I genuinely feel that doing so would be for the best. Diego has been doing well so far, and his confidence seems to be improving a great deal. This is everything we could have hoped for, yes? You say that as though you're some kind of puppet master pulling his strings. I cannot deny I'm a little deep in all this, I do apologize. At the end of the day, I will not stop you if you decide to tell him. I only wish... I only want what is best for Diego, as I am sure you do as well. He has been through a lot, I just want to help him as best I can. I don't want to keep secrets from him, but I won't deny you have a point. He's feeling the best he has since I arrived. I wouldn't want to jeopardize that. I'll think about it, okay? Thank you, that is all I ask. At the end of the day, I will support whichever I will support whichever you choose. Well, I guess I should get to work then. Ah, yes. Would you, would you mind terribly in keeping an eye on Russell for me? He's doing wonderfully thus far, but there is little I can do stuck here in the kitchen. Of course, I'll sort him out. Thank you. I didn't like the idea of not telling Diego one bit. There was no doubt in my there was no doubt Ty's mind was in the right place though. Should I come clean or should I trust in Ty's judgment? That was full of difficult decisions. I returned to the main bar where Russell was still dutifully serving customers. I set myself up at the bar and started preparing drinks. Before long, Russell had cleared his cue and turned on turned to me, striking a conversation. Hey man, it's good to see you. Busy day. So far, yeah. Worked my worked my other job in the morning. Now I'm working my second in the afternoon. Oh man, busy today. Nice outfit. Thanks, Ty uh, got me all suited up. I like uh, didn't like have anything like this in my closet. How's your first day coming along? Actually, pretty smooth like. Ty was like super worried we'd not have enough staff, but it's been pretty quiet so far. Usually picks up after about 9 p.m. During the week, it's people, it's people finishing work. Usually the bar is busy. During the weekend, it's, it's more the restaurant. I see. It's just, Ty's in the kitchen now. You think he's got this? Uh, anyway, could do it better than Ty. Oh, sweet. Good news. I guess that I guess that means I'm on the bar. He's taught you how to pass orders along, right? Worry not, my dude. I've got this. Your confidence is admirable. Ty said, like, it's exactly the same thing, man. Oh, yeah, speaking of, he seems pretty chill. Like, he's a good boss. He is. I wouldn't deny that for a second. He's certainly more personable than my other boss. Although sometimes, perhaps, too personable. What do you mean? He's, I guess you could call him a bit of a meddler. He's a great listener and is awesome if you're in a bind, but he tends to stick his nose a little too far into everyone's business. Really? Like, what is he? Like, done or whatever? I thought about the whole situation that had transpired. Diego was annoyed at Ty's interference in his business, although he had so far tolerated it as it, it, as it usually wound up working out for the best. One second, everyone, let me readjust my seating arrangement here. There we go. Alrighty. Okay. Despite that, I was very much in, I was very much in two minds about our most recent conversation. I wanted to tell Diego, but Ty had a point, and a good one at that. I didn't want to risk the knowledge hindering Diego. Well, Diego went through a messy breakup a few weeks back, and he didn't really have anyone he felt comfortable talking to at the time. I didn't arrive until a little after it all went down. From what I understand, Ty sort of installed himself as Diego's support person. Not that Diego was unwilling, but since then he's sort of been pulling the strings from behind the curtain, as it, as it were. So, like, he's been interfering and stuff? What's he been doing? Well, the whole combat tournament thing was his idea. Diego was down in the dumps, and Ty felt it was a good move to try and encourage him to participate. And even before that, he kind of told me some stuff Diego had said to him in confidence, with the hope it'd bring us together. It did, though, right? Well, yeah, that's it. He gets results, and usually everyone's happy in the end. It's usually. That's why Diego has tolerated it so far. Why I've tolerated it. He means well. I guess I'm just trying to, for, oh, I'm trying to forewarn you. He's out to help everybody, make everybody happy. It, it seems to be a shtick. I find that kind of sweet. He's like a guardian angel or something. I've made that same assessment. What do you think made him that way? I don't rightly know. He's quite secretive for someone who happens to know everybody else's secrets. I bet he has some bombshells tucked away for the right occasion. But there's also this dude he seems to know, and I won't talk about that. Um, even Lucas, my other boss, won't talk about him, even though Ty and him are friends, and he likely knows. 
Whoa, sounds totally sketchy, dude. Diego and I feel the same way, but nobody's talking, at least, least of all Ty. So we've sort of given up on finding out more. Do you think Ty will meddle with my, with my life? If something is going on, he might. He's astute. So if you're acting off, he'll pick up on it. But I doubt. But I doubt if you discourage. But I doubt. But I don't doubt if you discourage him, he'd leave it alone too. Like I said, he means well. He's just trying. He's just, just trying to help. He just has a terrible tendency to overstep his boundaries. But in a strange way, you could say I'm thankful. If it weren't for his meddling, maybe Diego and I would still be just friends like we always were. I see. Well, thanks for warning me, my dude. Uh, it, might, it might sound weird, but in a way, it might be nice to have someone like that at my disposal. I getcha. Anyways, how'd things go with Axel last night? Ha! That's like, I let my secret, my man. What? What are you talking about? You gotta talk to Axel about it. Stuff happened, and, and like, I ain't telling. Now I'm just curious. I will say, though, Dom and me, we're cool. Uh... Well, that's good, at least. I know he was a little uncomfortable around you at first. Uncomfortable? Yeah, I guess that's accurate, dude. But we've got it all figured out, though. I'm glad to hear that. Axel's particularly fond of you. It'd be awkward if his two closest friends didn't get along. For sure, man, for sure! At that moment, a customer entered through the main doors and approached the counter. Um, can I get a dessert menu? Oh, and, uh, what's a good drink that's sweet? Um, well, uh... What about a pina colada? They're our specialty. A pina colada? Yeah, okay. I began to work on his drink while Russell handed him the dessert menu. He looked over it for several moments before reaching out, reaching a decision. Oh, um, cheesecake, thank you. Uh, was that per slice, or...? Uh... Yeah, per slice. What he said. Can I, can I get a whole one? Sure, what flavor? A passion fruit. Russell took his name for the order and instructed the customer to sit at the table, which he did without delay. Gee, he looks pretty strong. Uh, what is it with it? What is it with this town and strong, strong dudes? I have no idea, but I ain't complaining, right? But I mean, more like I bet he's a fighter. You think he's in the tournament? He totally fits the bill. Thinking back to the previous night's discussion with Diego, I recalled that his next opponent was a bear. I admit I wasn't expecting a polar bear, but I suppose that was on me. Russell, mind if I see that order for a second? Sure. Russell handed me the order. One passion fruit cheesecake, one pina colada for Logan. I actually recognized the name and all doubt was dispelled. I handed, my, I handed my order back to Russell and craned my neck over the various taps and other instruments atop the bar to get a better look at Diego's next opponent. He was perhaps a touch taller than Diego. He was perhaps a touch taller than myself or Diego. But not by any great margin. He certainly possessed significant strength and also, but also a rotund, almost ball-like physique. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!